Now, for this talk, I want you to think about where it's most likely you're, you're running your Python code today. Um, I'm imagining that the majority of the folks in the room are not already using MicroPython or small devices. Maybe some of you are, which is awesome. Uh, okay, there's some nods in the room, but um, if you don't, um, I imagine that you're probably running Python on your on the cloud, on your machines, and Jupyter notebooks. Um, we heard that it scales to you know, image processing for the Space Telescope, which is amazing. Um, we know that it's moving to running on the browser. So we're going to talk about something that goes down to the other end of the scale, uh, down to smaller devices. So talking about running Python on small circuit boards, uh, on Lego bricks, um, that's going to become relevant later on, uh, on watches, um, it's, it can re really uh, get everywhere, and that's pretty cool, I think. So my name is Andy. Um, I work at Twitter as a developer advocate. I'm not here on behalf of or in any way related to, to that day job. Um, I'm here because I'm excited about Python and I'm excited about MicroPython. Um, I went to my first PyCon uh, a number of years ago over in um, Ohio, uh, and I'm really excited to be here at EuroPython, so thank you for uh, having me as a speaker. Um, I am not an expert in electronics. I am not an expert in MicroPython. Um, this is really going to be a talk about my uh, journey learning about uh, MicroPython in particular in the last sort of six, eight months. Uh, I have got some experience in the past, and I'm talking 10, 15 years ago. Uh, I worked at IBM. I was one of the people that worked on MQTT there. Oops, and I've gone forward a slide. Um, and I've been playing with things like Arduino for a long time. Um, but I've never sort of fully got my head around a lot of the electronics concepts. Um, I'm a Lego fan, that's going to become relevant. Um, so bear with me, uh, and hopefully you'll learn along with me uh, as, I've, uh, as I've discovered things here. So let's talk about MicroPython. What it is, uh, as in where it came, where it came from, really, uh, and the differences between it and, and other uh, varieties of Python, and uh, why I think it's important, why I think why, why I'm here talking about it, as opposed to talking about other um, varieties again or, or distributions of Python, uh, and uh, also how to start using it because that's kind of fun. So hopefully we'll. we'll uh, play around with it on a few different boards and, and see the kinds of things you can start to learn. So for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, how many of you are, have no knowledge at all of MicroPython or no idea what it is? A few of you, okay, cool. So MicroPython's actually just celebrated its ninth year, so just in May, um, it was the ninth anniversary of its first release. Um, it started off as a Kickstarter project from a guy called Damien George, who's an awesome guy. Um, he's actually over in Australia uh, now, and uh, he had this idea that um, Python's a, a great expressive language. Um, why not try to run it on small devices? Now, you can't run C Python on some of these devices. We're talking about things with very limited amounts of RAM in particular. So some of the optimizations in MicroPython are really focused on things that C Python um, is not optimized for. So it's not C Python. Um, it's a full re-implementation of uh, a language that looks very similar, as virtually the same um, as Python. It doesn't include all of the batteries included that you get with the, you know, the, the regular Python distributions. Um, the libraries in MicroPython have to be re-implemented specifically for the hardware and for the environment they're running in. So specifically, it's a re-implementation of Python at around about 3.4, 3.5 release, and since then, over the years, incrementally, um, they've added additional um, sort of pet features that have come along um, since then, uh, as they make sense and as they can be accommodated within the, uh, the constraints of the language. And since then, it's been ported across a whole range of microcontrollers. Um, the most recent one that's been added in the latest release of 1.19 of um, of MicroPython is, is a Renesas SA board, but um, about two weeks ago, the Raspberry Pi Foundation brought out the Raspberry Pi Pico W, which is a Pico with, with wireless, and uh, it runs there as well, um, which hopefully I'll be able to show you in just a few minutes. 
So you may have heard of some other um, things, and I know there have been also talks um, about uh, other varieties of Python for small devices, in particular CircuitPython from Adafruit, which is really, really cool. I'll talk about why I started down the, the path of MicroPython, though. Um, it's been going over, as I say, go, going since um, 2014 now, May uh, 2014. Uh, just before that, uh, I think, actually, was it 2013? It's had, just had nine years, so it must be um, 2013. Um, and this is just a, a, a star chart showing, um, and, and stars are not necessarily the best indicator of popularity or growth of a project on GitHub, um, but it's interesting to see um, that MicroPython, the... the um, the red line there has um, grown in a kind of a fairly linear fashion over time. Um, some other derivatives of MicroPython, things that have been built off of MicroPython, um, such as CircuitPython and PyBricks, um, have come along at different times and have also been um, tracking really well. It's exciting to see these languages um, getting into these environments. So why is it important? Um, well, Damien, uh, I was listening to a podcast the other day from a few years ago um, to, to get a, a bit more inside Damien's head, really, as, in, as I, best I could. Um, and he described his initial idea when he went to Kickstarter to, look to, to launch for some funding as sort of a proof of possibility, I think was the phrase he used, uh, which I thought was really interesting. Um, Python is a great language for expressing your ideas as code. Um, and I certainly have had that experience myself. I've been doing code in various forms for... 30 plus years, and I, I, I think Python's a great language. It's, it's, re it's, it's relatively easy to pick up, um, and it's very easy to be productive in very quickly. Um, it's particularly good for prototyping, iterating, trying things out, optimizing things later. And importantly, MicroPython is now the foundation, as I said, for some of those other projects. So Adafruit's put a, a lot of investment into building a version of uh, Python that's got MicroPython at its core called CircuitPython. Um, they've got a, a team that builds that um, commercially as well as it being an open source project. Um, they, they pay um, people to, to actually work on it as their day jobs. Um, CircuitPython itself has had stuff built, built in it. So there's a keyboard firmware called KMK for programmable uh, macro pads and things that's built on CircuitPython. So you've kind of got this, these sets of layers. Uh, Pybricks, um, which is um, able to run on, on a lot of Legos um, controllers, um, has been built on MicroPython as well. So I think it's really important to understand and build uh, on that foundation. And I was talking to Carlos downstairs earlier, um, who had some micro bits down in the, in the makerspace there. And he was kind of, kind of describing it as really a bit, bit like a distribution, Linux distribution model, where you've got a core, um, and you've got different ports and different varieties and, and different ways that people are bundling MicroPython um, and extending it. So you heard there'd be demos if you read the... Um, the uh, abstract I put out. So we're going to probably want to have a board. We don't have to have a board. There, are, there is an emulator called Wokwi, uh, which you can go and try MicroPython and an emulator of a board like a Pico um, in the browser, which is very cool, actually. Um, so you don't have to go out and spend lots of money on hardware. Um, AliExpress can end up being a lot more expensive than... It starts off looking when you start looking at fun little boards. Um, once you've got a board, you're going to need to put MicroPython on it. Um, I've got MicroPython on all the things on the desk already, so I'm not going to go into how to install it, but it's usually just a question of plugging the board in, resetting it into bootloader mode, and then dragging a, a firmware on um, in most cases, and a code editor. Now, how did I get involved with all of this? Well, in January, uh, Deborah, um, who's... Uh, a maker on Twitter uh, tweeted this uh, board uh, that you can see that you can see here the um, the one with the LEDs and she said some somebody's sort of blinged out uh, a tiny board which I've now put under here uh, with lots of RGB LEDs and she thought this is amazing and it cost I don't know four or five dollars so a bunch of us all saw that tweet and thought, yeah, OK, that's not very expensive. We all need one of those. And it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and other stuff on there as well. It's an ESP32C3 chip, uh, USB-C on the top. So she ordered one and started making jewellery with it. Um, it's, it's kind of fun. And she's got this um, necklace. She can, she can change the uh, stuff on there. And then she also made one which uh, had a, made a little 3D printed cloud and, and did different rain patterns and things on it. 
So I got one of these, and it wouldn't at that time support CircuitPython. Um, the ESP32C3 doesn't um, enable you to have a USB, um, mount it as a USB drive, which is what CircuitPython typically does, um, although they're moving more towards being able to program them directly over Bluetooth. Um, so I ended up starting a project um, for myself, uh, and then because a lot of other people had bought these boards around the same time, we all started sort of figuring out what the maker um, over in China had done, what the pins were on the board, um, what we needed to do to drive it. The other thing at the time, when I, in February, was that the ESP32, the Espressive um, C3 chips were not very, not as well supported uh, in MicroPython or in fact in the Espressive's own tool, tool chain. So we ended up fixing some bugs. Um, so I put together this little project. Um, it started off as MicroPython examples and then it ended up, I've played with TinyGo and there's some other languages you can, um, you can use on there as well. So that's why I went, started digging in on MicroPython, um, and it had been a while since I looked at it um, myself. I'd previously looked at CircuitPython, uh, which has got um, a really nice workflow. It's, you, you literally just are uh, editing a file on a USB storage, mass storage device. Um, MicroPython, you kind of need to do a bit more work yourself, which is fine for me, because I'm familiar with things. Um, MicroPython, as of um, some of the more recent versions, has got a um, CLI called MP Remote, which um, we'll try and have a quick look at in a second. Um, I also mentioned that MicroPython is not as batteries included as um, full Python, so you're typically going to need to be installing libraries as you need them, and you're going to want to be very thoughtful about what libraries you actually need, what hardware you're driving, again, how much RAM you're using on the board. Um, because with some of them, you're going to very rapidly run out. Other ones, you know, you can get some of the RP2040 boards with um, a lot more um, storage and, um, and other capabilities, uh, memory. And the other thing I started looking at was all of the IDEs options. So um, Nicholas is here and has got the, the Mu editor, which is awesome, and he's, um, that's, that works really, really nicely for um, CircuitPython in particular, works really nicely for, for lots of varieties of Python, uh, regular Python. We saw him building that, that cool game with um, Pygame Zero the other day. Uh, but um, there's a nice one called Thony, which I've been using. Um, there's a plugin for PyCharm. There's a plugin for VS Code from one of the other board vendors called PyMaker. I haven't got it to work. Um, VS Code's my go-to editor, so I'm a bit disappointed about that. Um, there's a variety of them um, to check out. So we're going to take a quick whip through some boards, uh, and that's why I've got this camera here, and we'll see what we can achieve. Uh, let's see. Where did I do with my Pi board light? So when Damien did the Kickstarter, he, um, he built a board, um, and this is actually a, cl a, a clone of the, pi of the Pi board light. I do have the actual proper Pi board light, but I picked up the wrong one when I was rushing um, and packing my stuff the other day. Um, now, these boards don't have um, uh, wireless connectivity on them. You can connect something to them. I hope people can see that. Everybody, can everybody see this okay? Excellent. I can actually increase the size of this for, for now because I'm not going to be uh, immediately jumping into code, um, but I will do in a second. So there's PyBoard Lite. Um, so they were initially the PyBoards were uh, sort of went bundled with um, the Kickstarter rewards. Uh, we've also got this uh, 5 by 5 board, which I've got a cable plugged into at the moment. Now, I should have this. This is where everything goes horribly wrong and I lose all my connections, so bear with me. That's not going to reach. Let's switch USB hubs so I can put it in front of the camera. I also need to get one of those funky um, close-up cameras, which this is not. So in principle, when I plug this in, it's going to connect the to the uh, EuroPython Wi-Fi. There's a little blue light on the back. So this is an ESP, uh, Espressive ESP32 board. Uh, has anybody heard of a project called Cheerlights? Nobody? So Cheerlights is um, basically lets you, can. it's a synchronized uh, color API driven over, oh wow, okay. Um, driven over uh, the internet, you tweet a color, hashtag Cheerlights. Uh, currently the color is green. Um, so this is subscribed to an MQTT topic. So when it started, it connected to the Wi-Fi, 
subscribe to the Cheerlights topic. If anybody wants to tweet MQT, uh, the Cheerlights uh, at the moment, that will change colour. But it's given the time, I'm going to jump straight over to the Pico W because I want to show you this one. So until um, about two weeks ago, um, the Raspberry Pi Pico was in uh, plentiful supply, but it didn't have any um, Wi-Fi connectivity. You could get some boards with Ethernet, or you could add Wi-Fi or Ethernet yourself. Um, they've just added one which has got uh, Wi-Fi. So let's jump into some code um, because I think this is hopefully going to work. Um, let's move to that desktop a second. So we've connected, I've plugged this in and we've connected to it. So this is, it's got a MicroPython, it's got a REPL uh, as has Python. Um, so I can do import uh, US uh, print uname. So um, the, the uname uh, functionality in, in the latest release has, has improved a bit, so it will show you a bit more about what, um, the tool chain it was compiled with, which is handy. So I've got a couple of uh, scripts here. There's one here um, called Space, which is borrowed from my friend Les Pounder, Big Les P on Twitter. Um, so this is going to connect to the conference Wi-Fi, and it's hopefully going to get us back the current list of astronauts in space. Um, that is saying it hasn't connected to the Wi-Fi yet, which is why it says false. Hopefully it will come true in a second. Okay, so that, that, that's the Pico. That's not running on my, my laptop. That's running on the, the Pico here. What's the point of that? Well, um, this could be connected to a small display in your home um, on very little power if you wanted to. Astronauts in space are probably not going to change very often, but you might want to um, uh, do some other things with that. Um, and the Pico is an incredibly affordable board. It's like six quid, seven quid for, the, I think, the Wi-Fi version. Sorry, you can tell I'm British and referring to things in quid rather than euros or dollars or any other uh, thing. The other thing I've got here, which I quite like, uh, Alastair Allen from the foundation, uh, Pi Foundation, put this one together. So I'm going to kick this one off. Let me stop the one that's running. Uh, and when I start this, there should be a, a new Wi-Fi hotspot in the room called Explore EuroPython, or ex sorry, ex Explore UPython, if anybody, anybody wants to try connecting to it. The password is uh, Dublin2022. And uh, there should be a web page at 192.168.4.1. I do have this to show you all, and especially for those who are remote and can't connect to that. Um, it will look something, I hope. Uh, like this. Um, so that's just running straight off the board again. Um, it, uh, if anybody's connecting, then I should be able to see it. But nobody has connected yet. So, oh well. I promise you it works, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do that screenshot earlier. There we go, somebody's connected, thank you. It's a Linux Android Dalvik machine thing. So the web address is 192.168.4.1. And then if you load that, you should get back the web page. And I've even got the SVG logo from the conference in it, I hope. Anyway, moving right along. That's, that's, this, is, this is quite simple stuff. I'm not going to um, plug in any more boards um, on the grounds of time. But again, the BBC Microbit uh, runs uh, MicroPython, and you can be programmed visually as well. Um, yes, Lego. I can't find my Lego Man board. Well, I have a Lego Man of my own, uh, which um, you can't see on the camera right now. Do you know, I do lots of conference speaking, but this one's going very, very quickly. Uh, so my Lego Man, so I'm into Lego, and I think Laurent from the Pybricks uh, team was going to try and connect to watch my talk. Um, but Lego sell a variety of these um, kits um, where you can program them typically on an iPad or something like that or, or with a visual interface. Um, so this is one of them. This is the, from their Lego Droids set where you can build an R2-D2 and drive it. Um, it comes with things like color sensors. So I'm not going to show you now for the reasons of purposes of time. But um, I can assure you that it works. It's really nice. It, well, this one is programmed over Bluetooth. Um, and they have an editor that looks a bit like this. So were I to run this and connect to it now, um, this would start printing out the color of things that I put in front of that sensor. Um, you could do some really cool stuff with that if you're building um, uh, things with Lego. 
Uh, it's a really nice project. Um, I apologise to the folks from Pybrix for not giving them a bit more time today. Um, but if you're interested in that, do check that out as well. But yeah, this is actually a nice, somewhere in my, my bag down there, um, a little Lego, a Lego minifig shaped board, definitely not approved by Lego, um, that uh, has a SAMD51 chip um, that uh, has got a micro USB connector on the back and you can use MicroPython or CircuitPython with that as well, which is really fun. And this watch is running Python. Um, this is a, it's a cheap, it's only, I think, 30 quid. Um, but it's got a touch screen, um, various sensors on there. So what I've been doing um, is, as well as um, learning about this stuff, coming to talk to you about this stuff, um, I've been trying to get involved with the community. Um, and I think that's really helped me. Uh, I've been writing on um, what I've been learning. So the, um, the little 5x5 five five board, there's a series of blog posts on dev.to, dev. Um, and I'm also moderating the MicroPython tag over there. Um, there's a GitHub topic now for uh, MicroPython that I submitted. If you didn't know, um, topics on GitHub, you can actually go and add, for the, which are on the explore section on GitHub, you can actually send a pull request to add descriptions and stuff. Um, I've also been attending um, the, the meetups. They have monthly meetups on MicroPython now. Um, the, all of the leads, um, uh, almost all of the leads, I think, are in Australia. So I've been um, joining at 7 or 8 in the morning and they've been having their meetups in, in their evening, but it's, it's been really good. They've, um, especially actually because of the fact that we've had the pandemic and we've had the lockdown, they've been doing them um, online, which has meant that I've been able to join, which has been really fun. Um, you can try MicroPython on Wokwi. Um, if you search for MicroPython Wokwi, which um, um, is um, fairly specific spelling there, uh, then you'll be able to find, um, there's a, a site where you can go and basically select boards and, and try things there. And the final two things I really want to recommend uh, are the awesome MicroPython list. So if you're familiar with awesome lists, there's one for MicroPython. You're going to learn a lot if you get into this around uh, different types of sensors, different types of connectors um, to attach uh, sensors to your boards. Um, and you often need drivers for those. So the awesome MicroPython list is a really good place to go and learn about them. And um, there's a great guy called Bavesh over in Canada who's been doing a, an amazing series of tutorials on his blog. Um, with videos as well showing, doing things like building color changing lamps, um, using MicroPython with MQTT, um, NTP, other things. This watch is actually connecting to MP NTP to do the synchronization. So thank you very much um, for attending. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I apologize that it seemed like I was scrabbling around for boards. I shall uh, consider my use of my space and time more uh, carefully in the future, or just ask for a longer slot. Um, thanks so much. Um, I, I, I can't stay for the sprints, unfortunately, uh, but um, do tweet me or uh, come find me before the end of today. Um, I'd love to, to chat. Thanks. Quick one, since I'm not familiar with all the hardware. Oh, yes. What are we talking about in terms of uh, memory restrictions? Uh, so I think um, the absolute the bottom, lower limits are, you know, they, they're in, um, you know, less than, less than megabytes of memory. I mean, you're talking about very small amounts of memory that they're, they're optimizing for and trying to do a lot of stuff as well um, in that memory, in, in, in RAM rather than necessarily... Um, you know, you've got no swap, right? So, so you're having to do that. Um, I don't know. It does, it does scale up as well. Um, I don't know. I have to say I'm not an expert on the absolute um, specifics. Um, what, what does a typical board uh, have, like the ESP32? Uh, so a lot of them are sort of one or two meg, mega flash storage for, for, your, for your files. Um, I, again, I'm not 100% sure on the actual uh, RAM restrictions on all of them. I'd have to go to look up the different specs for the different boards. Sorry about that. Thanks. Um, the other thing is I've been talking about like having lots of fun with all this stuff, which is, which is what I get to do. But um, the folks that actually are writing MicroPython, I, as, as I mentioned, several of them are in Australia, are using this for you know, industrial automation and industrial um, uh, use cases as well. So um, it's, it's definitely something that's 
uh, a bit more serious than, than blinking LEDs. Uh, folks are using it for some, some really cool orchestrations. But um, I will tweet some information um, about this later on, because I now feel like I need to know that. First of all, it was really exciting for me. Thank you. Um, I guess that when you started uh, working with this, you already had uh, uh, some experience with yes. the overall uh, thing. Uh, if someone uh, with less experience, someone uh, that's beginner, wants to actually start working uh, with MicroPython, uh, which uh, would be your advice? I think Wokwe is really nice because um, they've got some templates um, on there. Um, Microbit's really good as well because um, it's, it's designed as an educational tool and it enables you to go from sort of a block, block type based environment into, into Python. Um, I think that the advantage that CircuitPython has got um, is that they've got Adafruit behind it with a, a team of people that are building, constantly building tutorials, really good content on there. Um, CircuitPython is slightly different. Um, it's not 100% compatible with MicroPython. Um, but they've got some really great, you know, walkthrough tutorials. I think that's something that's not there currently on the MicroPython side, and that's what I'd love to help with. Pavesh is doing some great work um, around it, but um, it's it's all on a on a volunteer basis there, um, which is also the case to some extent for Adafruit. But um, it, I. Did struggle a little bit, and I've actually been chatting with a Jimmo, who's one of the folks who's on the core team um, for MicroPython, about how we can improve the documentation experience in particular. Um, again, because all of the boards are slightly different, um, and there's a number of ports. Uh, for example, the the, the network, um, which you briefly saw some lines of code from there, the, the WLAN um, uh, function, some of the some of the um, call, some of the, the the properties are slightly different between the different ports. So you end up digging through the, the docs to figure out what's what. Um, but I think um, a micro bit's really good um, for starting out. The Pi Foundation's got a couple of um, bits for, there's actually, they've actually got a book um, about, about micro, my, MicroPython on the Pico, um, which is quite nice. Um, I think those kind of resources are a good starting point. And uh, if, okay, I want to do another one, uh, is, uh, from the other perspective is that you have, uh, I guess, a lot of experience. So do you see uh, an area there for Python, for MicroPython, that uh, this technology has some steps to do more? Do I, I'm trying to understand, I just want to try and make sure I'm understanding the question. Are you asking if there's, if there's a gap? No, 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 I, I, I'm not sure that I, I heard properly. Um, are you saying is there a gap or something or is there an opportunity or? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I personally think that, the, that, that we can, that the, the MicroPython, I say we, I'm hoping to be part of that community uh, and, and everybody to be part of that community. I'm, I think that there are definitely some, some gaps because the core team is small and they're focused on the te technical aspects of the, of the language. So I think, you know, tutorials, um, documentation, um, all of those kind of things are an opportunity. And then also bringing things together in a, in a community space. There's, this, there's uh, currently... Um, a forum on, I think it's a PHPB, PHPBB based forum, there's a discussion about whether that's right for the job now or they might move it to GitHub discussions or something else. Um, there's a Slack uh, community, there's also a Discord community. So it's like knowing where to go, find out, ask questions. Um, and again, everybody's doing it on this better time, so, uh, as often happens. So um, it's really just making sure that everybody's talking to one another. And that's always an opportunity. Thank you. Okay, enjoy the rest of the week, thank you.